my computer just crashed. Um, that was that was brilliant. Um, <laughs> oh, that was that was definitely interested. Um, so yeah, so my computer just decided to crash. Um, don't know whether I'm back online. Um, I could be. Uh, let's 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 check. Let's see. Um, So yeah, I do apologize. Let's let's try that again. So where were we? We were at um uh I was just doing some stuff with Zebrush, right? So let's open up Zebrush. Um it might have to be one of these where I just have to like load in one program at a time. Um which is not ideal when you when you're doing 3D art, but hey, it's the only way forward. Yeah, my my computer just crashed miserably. Um so yeah, I don't know. I was like, why did it crash? Hi Rich, how's it going? Uh, tankers, said for Okay. Yeah, definitely don't ask me how you do that. <laughs> I can understand frustration. Um, yeah, well, my frustration face from uh, my computer crashing and completely like having I had to hold down the power button to restart it because it just it just didn't want to uh, like respond to anything. Anyway, um, yeah, I really need to try and get my other old desktop to see if I can use that as a streaming machine. Um, I'm gonna give that a go this weekend and give it a try and just see if I can set that up because it's. The laptop's really good, it's just because the streaming requires a lot of like CPU usage and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's always scary. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to try and get my old desktop to work um, and see if I can use that as like a streaming machine slash, slash second machine that I can have on um, in the background. Hopefully it should work because it's not like it's it's just been sitting there so it might just have too much dust in it. Um, so we'll see. Anyway, um, so yeah, so firstly, um, when I export outside of Maya, all my different parts of my mesh has a name. So for example, if we look at this sub tool, it, um, like the top ring is called top ring hot underscore high, handle underscore high, bottom ring underscore high. And the low poly mesh associated with that mesh is named the same, but underscore low. And the reason for that is when it goes into Substance Painter, we can use match by name instead of match by everything. Um, and what that means is that if you're doing, um, if you've got intersecting geometry, it'll only bake that mesh, that high part, that say like top ring high to top ring low. And it will only bake the information from those two things. Vice versa, it will bake handle high to handle low, uh, bottom ring to high to low. And so on. So it's a lot cleaner way of baking basically um, inside a substance painter, especially if you're doing cage baking because um, that's the thing. So to rename this, all I do is just click on the sub tool and I just click rename and type the name I want basically and make sure that my low poly version of this is the same name but with the prefix underscore low. Um, and when I'm exporting outside of <coughs> when I'm exporting outside of um, ZBrush, I just go into Z plugin, FBX exporter, and then I'll export these out. And the best thing is because they're named, they all export the same name, which is brilliant for, 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 for quickness. Um, the only other thing I might do, and for this it's not too bad because the, the poly count is quite low for the high poly, but what I might do is I might just run a quick decimation master on it, which uh, reduces the, the amount of polygons 
that I'm exporting. So like if this was like something like this, this one sub tool was like a million polygons, it's like, yeah, that's going to chug your machine, no matter what machine you're running. So what you can do is you can do, you can run like a decimation tool, which basically captures all the information. And I'm not going to do it because I've already ran it on this, but what it does is it captures all that information and then basically takes a screenshot of it. And it means that it will use the polys where it can without getting rid of the detail that you've sculpted in. So it means that you can get lower polygons basically on the export, which is good for, for speedness, but it doesn't get rid of any of the detail that's inside of them. So that's why you kind of you do a decimation master when you're bringing out high poly to bake. Um, it also works if you're doing characters as well. So like if you've got a character and you need to do some retopologizing inside a Maya or whatever program you're using, um, and your Maya is chugging, you can decimate it um, and then export it out um, and then retopologize that decimated model. Um, the only thing I would suggest when you do decimation is that you save, you make a, a unique save um, and before you run the decimation, you do a, you save it as a sub tool, um, so that if you do make a mistake and it screws up, you can easily go back a step and not have to worry about re uh, retopologizing the high poly um, to get what you need. Because yeah, that will that will happen if I press Shift F now. Um, yeah, let's see here. It's kind of made it a lot more manageable the geometry basically so yeah so so that's that um so then we can go into substance painter so i've exported all these sub tools out as uh, as individuals um and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to close this down because you never know <laughs> it's probably going to crash can't believe that <laughs> um so yeah the first bit of tonight's stream is is kind of talking about um baking inside of substance painter because i need to upload this to youtube um uh, for my first year students because i did a lecture on it on monday and obs corrupted my my um uh, my file and yeah i lost an hour's worth of me talking which is probably not a bad thing losing an hour's worth of me talking um but yeah it means i had to redo it Hope Hello, is this any better? Have I got audio back? That is the question. Yeah, I just, I, I, I'm giving up on technology at the moment. Like, it's, uh, yeah. Um, okay, let me just raise this up a bit so it's thingy. Ah, uh, so I actually think it's a problem with RTX because RTX is still in its better stages, the RTX voice. 
Um, and I think it's because the RTX voice relies on GPU. And when I'm obviously using Substance Painter and ZBrush, that relies on GPU. Um, and I think it just completely cuts it out. Um, and then I have to kind of restart Streamlabs or OBS and that sort of stuff to get it working again. So um, I think it's it's going to have to be this microphone for the time being, which I think is, is an all right microphone anyway. Um, because if I was to use my Blue Yeti, because of how much my fans are going off at the moment, it, it just picks up everything basically. So I need to, I need to play around and have a look at a look at thing. And if I, if I can use it on, no, I won't be able to use it on the the the, the, the thingy. But hopefully, I can I can get it sorted. But anyway, I'm going to get back to kind of what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, I'm going to select my low low poly. I'm going to make sure all this is ticked off because you don't want to auto unwrap it when it comes inside of here. That that'd be a bad thing. A document resolution is fine, okay. Pardon me. Okay, so I've got my mesh inside a Substance Painter. It's alright, I'll just draw on it, it's fine. Um, so the next thing I want to do is I need to do, um, I need to bake this. I need to bake the detail from the high poly to the low poly. Um, and the way you do that is if you go into texture set settings here um, and you can bake the mesh maps. Now I turn off ID because I don't use ID myself. Some people do and that's fine. Um, I use a masking method inside the layers inside a substance painter. So that's that's the difference. Um, and I'm going to load in the high definition meshes here. So if I go to here, uh, all of them are named correctly. And it doesn't matter if they're named different in your save files, but inside the 3D software where you've extracted them, they have to have the name underscore high or underscore low prefix. It doesn't matter what file to file name you name them in the outliner um, in, in this bit here. This bit's fine. It could be named, uh, I don't care, and it'd be fine. It's whatever it's been named in in the 3D software, basically. So it's going there. And I come down to here and I change match by always to by mesh name. And that means it's going to mesh. It's going to match those me meshes together, basically. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change. I'm going to keep the output resolution to 512 at the moment. And that's because I want to do a test bake. I want to see if it will bake or not. Um, I know it's going to bake because I've done this demonstration twice now. But just to be sure and just to be quick about things, you're thinking, dilation is mean the, means the edge padding between each shell. Now, a dilation of 32 means is about 32 pixels, which is going to be huge. Um, so I want the dilation down. To be fair, I'll take the dilation off. If I get some weird artifacting, I might whack it put it up to like one or two maybe but that's if I'm getting any like weird artifacts basically so for this now no rich I think my computer is going to be fine now I think he says touch wood um touch monkey skin as, as, as my partner says um I think it's I think RTX voice is just screwing things over basically so let's give that a go um now I'm going to come back to this in a minute because we're going to have to change these values because I know for a fact it's not going to bake correctly and you're going to have some errors. So I'll come back and explain those in a minute. Uh, I'm going to keep all this ticked on and I'm just going to bake selected textures. Okay, okay. What's up with you? So we did get an error then. Uh, my computer didn't die, luckily, uh, but I will need to go into Maya and see what the issue is. Because I'm not quite sure. Let's try and do it again. I'm just going to change that to 8x8. Hmm. 
Interesting. Okay, so the first issue we had was that the names weren't correct. Um, so that's why we, we had the issue. Um, and that's why I'm going to go back into May now and just double check that I exported the correct FBX. Um, but definitely that is the reason why. Because when I clicked on everything, it's worked. So it's to do with the naming convention on that side. Um, I was talking about these gray errors a minute ago, and that's why we're going to change the distance between the frontal and the max baker, because it's just not picking up these 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 bits here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that now. So, um, but first, what I want to do is I want to check the uh, the FBX basically, because um, I think the issue definitely is the issue with the naming convention, or else it wouldn't have worked. With um, with the everything, so it's it's definitely to do with the names. Okay, so so yeah, I think that FBX that's in in that folder hasn't got these these things separated out, so. We'll, we'll fix that now and we'll just export this FBX back out. Um, so history freeze export. And I'm just going to save it over that FBX. Um, and we have to update it in here. There's no way you, you need to update it or else it won't work. So if you go to edit, uh, go to project configuration and you can reselect it here, click OK and it will update it. Now, um, you can do this throughout the project. So if you make a change on your low poly, air, uh, low poly model, um, you can update that in substance whenever you want. The only thing is it might break some of the masks that you use and it might break some of the assignment of materials, which you can just fix quite easily. But if you need to make a change, you can do. And then you can just re-import it back in, basically. Um, okay, so let's try this bake mesh again and let's try it with um, by mesh name. And this should, fingers crossed, work. He says, fingers crossed. There you go. And as you can see, it's worked first time off. And that's the reason why it didn't work first time is because the names, it wasn't separated out into separate meshes. So it wouldn't have baked properly. Um, the next thing I need to do is fix this, these gray issues. And the way you do that is I can just change this value. And if I change this value as well. And it's the distance is used for the calculation between the high and low poly mesh. So the more you increase this, it will fix the, the issue. Best is if you don't have to move those values, but sometimes you will. And I find normally 0 0.8 fixes most of those issues. So as you can see here, I've got a pretty decent bake. Um, and if we were to use the everything method of matching the, the, the two meshes together, you would have this detail baked onto this. So if you were ever to move this off the off, you would have it actually baked onto the lower part, which is not good. It's not what you want, basically. So that's why I prefer to use uh, by mesh name than by everything when I'm when I'm baking. Um, and it's it's pretty decent bake. It's it's obviously very low res, so we're we're gonna we're gonna make this a bit more high res. Uh, so I am gonna change the um, uh, output size, and I'm gonna put maybe two pixels um, uh, dilation on it. Now this is obviously gonna take a lot longer because you are baking at a higher resolution. You're baking 2048 by 2048 instead of um, 512 by 512. Um, and I always find to work higher to lower than lower to higher. 
Um, and you can change texture sizes inside a substance anyway. So you could bake everything at 2048 and then um, can't think. Bake everything at 2048 and then when you export the texture, you can export it at whatever size you want. Okay, I think I had a few skip frame frames frame frame frames earlier, and that's because it was it was running a process on it. Um, and it's just going through the different maps. So as you can see here, it's got a pretty decent bake. Um, it's actually pretty close to what to what I want it to do. Um, and one of the really big maps that my the materials that I've got smart materials that I've made inside of here that that use this is curvature. Curvature is the biggest thing for stylized, um, because it just helps with edge detection and all this finer detail that you've got here. Um, so if I was to just quickly demonstrate um, what the wood material looks like, um, so this material I kind of made from. A few different examples that I saw. Um, uh, one of those examples was actually my old lecturer, Dave Wilson. Um, he did a he did a really good tutorial on um, texture in a stylized um, chest. So that was pretty cool. Um, so if I scroll down, I should find it. Here we go. I'll just drag this in. And what I would do is. Um, so I use a black mask. So what I'd, in this group, it's got all my um, layers uh, that I've done to build up the wood. And then on the top group, I would use a black mask. And then I use the polygon fill here. And I can just click this. Uh, click this one as well. And that's why I always have the UV up as well, because it, sometimes it's a little bit easier to, to kind of see that and to be able to, to kind of work from that. Um, so yeah, um, I've got another um, stylized material as well, which is the metal. Um, actually, I think that one's not as good. Uh, I did an edit to it actually the other day. Uh, click black mask. I can, and at this point, it's it's very much paint by numbers, like. Uh, and there you go. And these these are quite easy to make. So once you've like made your material, you can make it into a smart material quite easily. So if you right click on here and just go create smart material, then it's in your library basically for whenever you need to use it, which is which is really good. So um, it's well worth it once you've made something that you're really happy with and you want to use it for the same scene. You can create a smart material and you can share that smart material around um, uh, on your projects and stuff like that. So yeah. So that's that's the first method of baking that I wanted to show you, which was um, cage baking. Um, the next method is baking to a plane. Um, so I'm going to show you um, the 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 kind of tileable Z brush thing I did the other day. So if I go to um, let's not save that. Um, and for this, I might just quickly show you my method of creating creating these because it it was. It, I think it's useful. Uh, so if I go into ZBrush, ah. I just uh, Um, 
Um, okay. So, uh, let me just get this file open. Okay, I'll load the, the more recent file um, just because it's just easier and I can show you show you what it's looking like. So that's that's my my file. That's I'm, I've exported it ready. Um, it's been decimated um, and it's ready to go. Um, I've actually got um, if we just go back to the sub tools. Um, so I've got my high poly floor. Uh, I've got my low poly as well, which I'm baking to, which is a bait is a plane basically. Um, and what I did to begin with was in in Maya I made some bricks the shape of these, so squares. Um, I also made a, a plane as well, so which was the right size. I think it was two centimeters by two centimeters. I can't remember roughly off the top of my head. Um, and then what I did was I brought this in and then sculpted on top of all these. Um, and then what I had to do, it because it was like something like 7 million polygons or something, um, I decimated it. So it's now 470,000 polygons. Um, and I'll take this into side of um, uh, substance um, and bake it. Now, I baked... A height map from Substance Designer, and then I baked the rest of the maps from Substance Painter. Um, now, what you could do is you could bake all the maps from Substance Designer. You could actually add all the texturing inside of there. Um, it's entirely up to you, you really. It's how comfortable you feel with each piece of software. But for me, um, height maps from Substance Designer are a lot better than trying to get them from Substance Painter and X Normals. Um, so, uh, yeah. That's what I did. Um, but if I go back to an earlier stage, so if I go open. Okay. So probably not that one. Maybe a bit sooner. Uh, no. Uh, three. Did I just open up three? I did, didn't I? Cool. Uh, file open. Okay. So I'm going to select this one anyway. Um, and what I did was, um, obviously it's sitting up there. So I'm, I'm just going to add a little bit more geometry in there. Um, just just because uh, I kind of want it quite um, detailed here. And again, I just come in with a... Um, a trim dynamic brush and I kind of make the edges break the edges up I'll rotate around and I'll start to cut this geometry in here um, and again I'm not just looking at it from the top down even though that's I, I want it quite a few different angles um, and I'll just break up the silhouette, basically. Um, that's what I'm doing at this point. Um, and yeah. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to start to add some more geometry into this. Now, um, I can come back and redo, like, go over this once I've added this kind of detail. So the first thing I'm going to do is use clay build-ups, or build-up, basically. And what this does is it just... It lets you add geometry in to the into the into the mesh. So I'm just gonna thinking. Oh, that's messy. That doesn't look like rock. What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna take the planar brush if I can find it. I'm gonna put a square alpha on it. It's an alpha 28. And then what I'm going to do is start to sculpt in. And if you take your
and I'm just taking my pen off at points as well so that I can get a nice edge to it. That's probably a bit too extreme. You do have to be careful because uh, it will. Um, and you can add to it as well. So if I wanted to. And then as well, what I can do is go in and use a trim, trim dynamic to kind of merge this out a little bit. And I'm holding alt as well, and that's giving me um, kind of move. I can add stuff to it. Uh, again, with the trim dynamic, what you want to do is put like a square brush on it. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of, and what you could do then is if you wanted to build some more areas up. So like here, maybe it's not roughly what I want. I can then go into say um, planar again. Okay, I can and I can change the intensity as well so it's not as hard. That's probably not the best thing to do there. Okay, if I press Alt as well, it's going to add stuff to it. And you can start to get kind of like a slaty look to it, basically, and that just that thingy. And it's it's all about building things up as well. So I can go back in and with the trim dynamic. Um, and mesh some of the edges up a bit more, but I can also go in with a um, with a trim. Oh, what is it? It's not trim dynamic. It's um, a trim adaptive. It's called. Um, so if I just go into the light box, this is where all your brushes are kept. So if you can't find your brushes in here, it will be in a folder here somewhere. So trim, and I'm just going to go trim adaptive. Trim smooth border maybe. If you if you bring that in, um, you could also use a. Um, I don't think it's trim. It's trim adaptive. I think it's called. Uh, trim smooth border. And if I put an alpha on that, um, it basically works off where you've touched it first. So if I press Alt, it will add geometry in there, and then I can smooth it out. And I can I can play around with that um, and that sort of stuff. And that's kind of how I, I make these holes and make this detail and that sort of stuff. You could also use um, something called a H polish brush um, as well to kind of maybe smooth out some of these more jagged areas like this. Use the H polish to, to kind of do that in. And yeah. Um, and what that does is it's just adding a lot of kind of like height variation and and stuff like that, which is which is is what you want. You want to kind of um, break the silhouette basically on it. Um, and yeah, that's that's how I did. And that's how I got from here to Blue Peter moment. No. And once you do one, you'll get used to it. So it will be it'll be easy to keep doing it basically, and that's kind of how I built this up. Um, so at the moment it's there, um, and all I did was the same as before, made sure the naming was correct and exported it. Um, and then what I'm going to do is put this in into um, Substance Painter, so I can show you um, the, uh, the the baking from from above. Pardon me. Uh, so let's just launch that. Yeah. 
hope everybody's having a good night. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is go file open. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to go file new. Uh, I'm going to bring in the bait plane. So uh, stone floor. Uh, where are you? Okay, clear. Oh, is that it? The one? No. So this one here. <laughs> Click OK. And then with this one, uh, bait mesh maps. And I'm just going to not bait the ID again. I'm going to bring the high poly in. Now for this, it doesn't matter. I can keep it on always because it's just going to bake bake it down basically it's what's what's anything uh anything that's below it um above it it's going to bake basically we're going to have to change these distances again so i'm going to put one and one now ideally you could put the bait plane above the high poly mesh um which would give it um give it um the same amount of bake basically but we can just change these values to to what we see here and that'll work I'm going to bait this straight off now, 512, get rid of dilation, uh, put some um, uh, anti-aliasing on it. And you can see here, it's taken that information um, and it's baked it. So we can, we can go from there. So um, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to make it bigger. Um, and bait selected. It's going to take a little bit longer. Don't leave the stream, it's, it will end, <laughs> promise. There you go, back to normal, or maybe not. Okay, so um, so yeah, as you can see here, it's baked directly to the plane, um, and it's baked from the top down. Um, so yeah, it, it's 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 a good it's a good method. Um, other ways you could use this method would be if I just create a new scene, so I don't have to screw that over. Uh, would be to let me just create a baked plane. Uh, and I'm going to make sure it's one on one. So, for example, say I was making a, um, what can we make? A bolt. So, if I make a bolt, And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this to say six. Um, so it's a bit more bolt like. So if this, this is the top of the bolt, um, what I'm going to do is grab that and I'm going to bevel this edge. Probably not that extreme. It's probably a bit too extreme. So like a, like a point two, but I'm actually going to do something first because Before I bevel it, I'm going to actually add a little like nut um, screw section. So if I grab another square, just grab my wireframe on so I can see this. 
Now, the reason why I'm doing it this way, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Boolean uh, difference. So that's my difference. Uh, and then I'm going to clean this up because I need to, um, for all purposes. I could just do an automatic clean up on this because it is it's it's a high poly so it doesn't really matter but I'm just going to clean it up for for demo purposes. So I'm using the multi cut tool here and to clean this up. And the same here. And when I'm happy what I do is I'll not do that because it doesn't want to. What's up with you? Let's try that again, shall we, with a multi cut? If it doesn't work, delete the face. And what you can do is extrude these faces so it goes like that. Sometimes it just won't work. It just does something. It's just like, nah, don't want to do that. I'm on. I'm on strike. I'm not going to work. Multicut has never been a solid tool. Like, it's it's always since I first started using Maya back in 2008, it's always been a tool of just temperamental. But anyway, so the reason why we're going to bevel these edges is because when you bake from a plane it bakes and it casts ray uh, it casts the rays downwards now if we have a 90 degree angle like that what it's going to do is it's going to cast directly down and it's going to miss everything it's going to miss any detail because it's 90 degrees it's straight down it's not going to see it so what we do is we add a small bevel to it and when the ray comes down it bounces off the, that geometry basically and gives you your normal map. Uh, okay, so if I bevel this now, it should work. There you go. beveled the wrong edge there but we can we can fix that okay and then what I'm going to do is just make this slightly bigger um, and for this demonstration purpose we're going to put the bake plane over the top uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to export this out onto the desktop so this is going to be bolt This is going to be bake. Uh, and if I just go into file new, um, so I'm always going to keep the the bake plane because that's what I need it for. Uh, click OK. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Discard that. And if I go file, uh, sorry, bake mesh map. Get rid of that. So I should be able to bake this now. And uh, nothing. There you go. Fixed it. Okay, so I've got my 
I've got my my bait now. Um, what I could do with this is I can actually turn it into a brush stencil. So, for example, what I could do is come under my brushes um, and come under basic hard. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to untick all of these except for normal. And with the texture, that, the normal map that I've just baked, I can turn this into a stamp. So way I do that is if I grab this, drag it onto normal, and just create a new layer. Uh, actually, I could just create a new layer, not a fill layer. So uh, add a new layer. And all I'm going to do is add a, a, a black mask to it. Um, and add a paint layer. And if we go back to my brushes and set that brush back up, because, yep, reasons, where are you? Brushes, 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 basic hard. Why, where are you? Why aren't you working? I mean, it's working there. So I've got my um, brush here. Um, I can also change like the size of it, the angle. It's pretty decent. And what I can do is I can go right click, create a um, a tool brush set or a, or a create a brush preset and that means it just saves it basically um, on there and you can use it over and over again basically so that's one way of kind of using this to, 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 to get stencils and that sort of stuff so for example if I was to save this now create a brush preset so I'm gonna call it um, bolt I'm also going to create a tool as well, just in case. Um, I'm going to call this Bolt. Uh, and if I go into, like, a, say, open up a new um, discard the changes. Let's just let it load up. Okay, and if I just create a create a fill layer, see if this do it. Brushes, brushes, brushes. It's not worked because you know why would it? Do you know why it hasn't saved the uh, normal map? Oh. Ah, but it has here. So um, if you want it to transfer between different projects, make sure you save it as a tool. If you want it just for that project, save it as a brush. Um, yeah, so I can. And you can see this is quite useful if you're doing stuff. some interesting designs with it so that's the two methods of baking you can use inside of substance painter to bake you can also use xnormal as well um, to bake stuff I, I use xnormals to bake um, alphas if I've got like grills and plants and that sort of stuff I use xnormals to bake bake that detail basically um, so yeah so um, I think that's that's thingy so for anybody who's watching um, I've had to do the first 
hour of this to talk about bacon inside a substance painter because I tried to record for my first year students. Um, I, I did the I recorded the lecture uh, while I was doing it, and OBS decided to corrupt my file and delete it. So um, yeah, I lost about an hour's worth of teaching um, into about forty five second clips. So um, yeah, so that first hour is is thingy. So if if you if you're only on my vods, if you're only coming to catch up with that, that that's cool. Um, now I'm going to continue actually doing the work um, and uh, kind of finish it. So um let's 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 put some music on let's chill out a bit uh but yeah this was the, this was the stone floor I made um, which has got, um, and I also baked the height map out of Substance Designer, which, which I'll, I'll kind of show you now, um, because it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, let me just get rid of these. Uh, cause I wanted to use, um, tessellation inside of Marmoset for this. So I was like, okay, let's, um, let's bake it. And I actually sat with one of my master's students the other day and we, we went through this because we were like, what's the best way of doing this? Um, and Substance Designer is the best way of doing it. Like we found, um, I'm just going to file new Substance. Uh, I'm not going to call it, uh, let's call it Stone Floor. Okay, and I'm going to import Uh, 3D mesh. Gonna, it's the load one, and then what I'm going to do is bake model information. So I'm just going to right click on here and bake it. I'm just going to add the high definition. So I'm just going to high. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a baker because this you have to add the baker. And all I'm going to do is bake a height map from mesh. Uh, I'm gonna save it in in a place where I know where it is. So sure it's saved as a tar TGA there we go yeah that's fine always uh, whack this up because the bait plane is on the floor so I need to need to increase it uh, and start rendering Okay, close. Um, and yeah, if I if I open up Marmoset, I'm risking it here. I'm risking it. Um, and I'll pop it on here. And you'll notice it that it's tessellating. 
uh, based off the displacement map that I baked from um, thingy. This is killing it, so I'm going to shut this down a minute. Um, so yeah, so it's good to bake from uh, the height map from, from here. Might keep this a short stream today because, um, yeah, there's uh, <laughs> some issues with my technology. Um, so what's the what's the next step? So next step for me is um, I need to finish. I need to find some reference for the stool, um, but I also need to um, um, kind of I need to get some crate reference as well for here. Um, because this is this is where this is where it's going. Um, I've done the the stone the stone texture, which is good. Um, and I think then I'm, I'll be ready to kind of render and kind of present it. Um, and then probably the next stuff that I do on stream um, next week will be some more material stuff. I think maybe go into a bit more of substance designer. Maybe I don't know yet. See see how busy of a of a week I have. Uh, on here um, and yeah I think I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it short this week um, just because um, I want to try and get my other machine working so that I can start to stream off that machine so I'm not putting all the workload on this machine and like so when I'm rendering um, it's not chugging because I think I lost a few viewers today because it, it was just chugging the machine and I was lagging and all sorts and it crashed my machine to begin with so so I think um, I'll call it there for this week um, and uh, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next stream. Bye.